In example two, we're given a price demand equation, which again is already solved for x, and we're asked to complete the following. First thing we want to do is find that elasticity of demand, E of P. So flipping back to Wolfram Alpha, we can again evaluate this as negative P times D over DP, so the derivative of our price demand function, divided by the original function, Again, we can glance at this input just to make sure that that's correct, and we get our elasticity of demand function. In parts B, C, and D, what we want to do is determine for what values of P our demand is elastic, inelastic or unit. So depending on the price point that we enter, when would we get a value that's greater than one? Because that would be elastic demand. When would we get a value that's between zero and one? Because that's when demand would be inelastic. And when would we get an elasticity of exactly one, meaning our demand is unit? So in order to do that, we can click on this elasticity of demand function, which just saves us the trouble of retyping it. And what we can do is ask Wolfram Alpha to solve when that function would be greater than one. So we'd be solving for when demand is elastic. So in this case, we would get that that statement would be true whenever P is between 11 halves and 11. But since we're dealing with price points, it might make more sense to put this into an approximate form. So as long as our price point is between $5.50 and $11, or we could say that as long as P is in the interval from 5.5 to 11. So if we're charging anywhere between $5.50 and $11, demand would be elastic. If instead we solved when this function is between 0 and 1, so we have 0 is less than our elasticity of demand function, which is less than 1. And again, solved. We would find out that that would be true when P is between 0 and 5.5. And then in part D, our last step would be figuring out when demand is unit. So that's exactly when our function value is equal to 1. So we would solve that elasticity of demand function equal to 1. And we would get 11 halves, or in decimal form, 5.5, which makes sense. It would be exactly that tipping point between elastic demand and inelastic demand. So if we charge $5.50 for our item, our demand would be unit. In example three, we're given a different price demand function, but in this case, we have the added step that this function isn't solved for x. So our first step will be to take this function and solve for x, which would give us x is equal to 25,000 minus 500p. From there, we want to calculate the elasticity of demand function. So we'll enter in those statements again, check our input to ensure that's what we're after, and what we end up with is 500p over 25,000 minus 500p. And again, if we wanted to, we could get that reduced form by clicking on the output, and then looking at these alternate forms. So in this case, this would re reduce pretty nicely to p over 50 minus p. Then what we want to do is actually interpret that result for e of 30. 
So we could evaluate that function when p equals 30, which would give us a result of 3 halves. In this case, that value is greater than 1, meaning that demand is elastic. So there are a few different ways that we could interpret these results. Throughout these examples, we'll take a look at a couple different variations. But one thing that we could say here is that if price is increased, by say 10%, then our demand will decrease by 0 0.1 or 10% times the value for our elasticity function, which would give us 0 0.15 or 15%. So to calculate change in demand, we can always take our percent change in price times elasticity of demand to generate that percent change in demand. So in this case, demand was elastic since our result was larger than 1, which means that a 10% increase in price will generate a 15% drop in demand. So that drop in demand would be larger than our increase in price. So increasing price in this case would actually decrease our revenue. Or to flip that around the other way, if we're in an elastic scenario, what we would want to do is decrease price in order to increase our revenue. 